Hello? Check it out. It's an iPad bag. It's pretty dope. It fits my iPad 10.5 with the case on it. Slides on up in there. Has some nice felt for the interior. Um, it has mostly foam all around. A big old pocket for my wallet and maybe a caliper or two. It's so big, the iPad actually fits in the pocket. I am extremely happy with this design. I actually copy another bag that was too big and way too thin. Cool things about this, the side has some clasps you can take off, if I can get it off. In case for whatever reason I wanted to take them off. And the front pocket has Velcro. And I like how I lined that up. I did some, what's this called? Binding tape. Not sure if you can see it. On the inside. Trust me, it's there. I'm pretty proud of this. It's a nice project for me to get very familiar with Texo behind me. So let's see how I did it. Using the iPad and Procreate, I quickly sketched up a simple design copied from another bag. I also broke up the pieces I will need before moving into Illustrator to create the final dimensions. After getting most of the design complete, I focus on getting the exact dimensions of the iPad with the case on to make sure I had enough room. I use this pretty cool 3D printed device to measure the radius of my iPad case and included it in my design. For the interior, I will be using this beautiful gray felt. And for the outside, I will be using this waterproof canvas with these cool patterns on it. Opening up Illustrator, I started with the main shells that everything will form around. I made sure to distinguish the seam allowance with fainted dotted lines. Due to the bleed settings of my printer, I was not able to print the shells on a single sheet of paper. So I had to specifically set up a template size to do some test runs. This will come in handy later. Most of this design is pretty much the same, just some boxes with rounded corners. 
I ended up saving the more difficult parts until later. First is the pocket with the lid. The lid will be held on with a hook and loop system. This piece will be for the gusset that will contain the zipper. I need to make sure that I account for the width of the fabric that comes with the zipper. When zipped, the two sides will need to come together and match the width of the bottom gusset. This is how the final layout will be. At this time, I have not decided on how to organize the panels, so I printed them out using the bleed settings template to make sure I was not missing anything. During the process, I changed the dotted line to mean cut instead of seam allowance. I took my time to make sure the pattern was accurate as possible. This being my first time, I wanted to make sure I eliminated as many variables as possible in case I ran into any issues. For repeatability, I also made sure to take the templates as accurate as possible. Here I started to prep the foam I will be using in the middle of the felt and the canvas. I thought I should try a test piece to make sure my process was sound. It was a good thing I did various testing during my process. I found that my calculations on the foam inserts were not accounting for the seam allowance. I ended up making them a bit bigger. Again, I am making sure I cut out my patterns as accurate as possible. After each cut, I check for alignment of the pattern pieces before taping them together. Ultimately, I decided on no alignment marks and utilized the dotted lines. Finally, after all the upfront work, I got to the point where I was ready to assemble the test piece. This will be the back panel in case I messed up. I initially thought to sew the top panel sandwich together but I ended up creating a top stitch that was out of place for the design. Here is the result of the test piece. This is when I was glad I took precautions because I was not happy the way it turned out. The panel was too fluffy and the outer edges were a bit misaligned. Reaching the home stretch. The last and most difficult part would be to accurately cut out the top and bottom gussets.
The final part here was sewing the rest of the panels, which went by pretty smoothly. The only issues here were sewing around the corners. However, the slits I cut earlier helped out quite a bit.
Here's a look at the final bag. Overall, I was happy with the way it turned out. I ended up copying the method of connecting the straps from the older bag. I went into this project unsure of my ability to complete it. However, I was surprised that I had little to no issues. I am excited that I have something functional to carry my iPad around in. I was able to push my abilities and learn something new. I really hope you do the same. Thank you for watching.